But in terms of Brexit, let's assume that there is no extension. That's what the government in the UK says will be the position. Let's also, shall we make the assumption that there is no deal by the end of December because there's a lot going on. What situation would the financial services industry in the UK be in then? So, hi, Anna. So what we've um, done, as I think we've talked about before, is that the industry has done everything that it can do. It's worked with regulators, it's worked with governments and authorities to make sure that it is uh, as best prepared as it can be to make sure that it continues to serve customers and clients, um, whatever the outcome. Uh, obviously, uh, if there is uh, an arrangement between the UK and the EU, if we do uh, end up in a situation that was set out uh, in the political declaration, then clearly uh, that is a better outcome from everybody's perspective. Uh, but, you know, pretty much from, you know, the 23rd of June uh, uh, 2016, the industry has been working back from what was originally uh, uh, the, the date um, that we were going to leave the EU uh, and then the date that was set uh, for the end of the transition period to make sure that uh, as much as possible, irrespective of the, of the outcome of those talks and negotiations, uh, it is able to continue to play its role in the broader economy. So, I mean, you're dealing now with the coronavirus, don't you push the government to let you have some kind of extension on Brexit? I mean, uh, it, isn't it difficult for businesses to think about dealing with both of those things at once? Well, I think it's not just it's not just business that's having to deal with Brexit and the coronavirus and, and all the other economic factors that we're going through at the moment. Clearly, there is a bandwidth issue uh, on both the European side and the UK side when it comes to uh, uh, when it comes to these negotiations and the broader context that they're taking place in. Um, however, as I've said, ultimately we've had to make sure we can't you know find ourselves dependent. Um, on the on the political situation or the negotiating situation, you know, we've never taken it as an absolute certainty, uh, nor have assumed that there would be a deal uh, at the end of this. We never assumed that there would be a deal when we left the European Union. Any well-run company will make sure that it has all its contingency plans in place, that it hopes for the best but prepares for the worst, uh, and that's very much what our industry has sought to do throughout this process. As I say. It would be far better, far simpler, far easier from everybody's perspective um, if we do get to uh, a place that looks uh, like the political declaration that was originally uh, negotiated. I think there is good faith uh, on both sides uh, in terms of wanting to have uh, a deal uh, at the end of this. Um, but we can't assume that. And that's never been the basis that we've operated on, nor would I expect any business to do so. So as Matt was referencing there, of course, coronavirus is something that the city is also having to deal with uh, right now. Big change to, to working conditions for many uh, and, and many with, with health concerns, no doubt, around this. What about the role that the banking sector can play here, Miles? Because in the last crisis, the banking sector was seen kind of as the bad guy. And now the banking sector is trying to cast itself as part of the solution and not the problem. Is too much being expected of the banks, though, here? So I think, as, as you say, Anna, I think there is a, there's a significant difference here between where we were in the last crisis 12 years ago uh, and where we are now. So that crisis uh, was, uh, to a large degree, uh, came out of the sector uh, and uh, the way that the sector had been regulated. Uh, you know, this is an external shock. This is a largely unpredicted external shock that has hit uh, the wider economy uh, and through which... Uh, the financial services sector um, is is doing its bit. Uh, so you could characterise it as saying that in the in the last crisis, uh, it was the it was the rest of the economy that came to the rescue uh, of the the financial services sector. Uh, and uh, on this occasion, not just in the UK, but if you look at uh, the role that the industry has played uh, in the EU, in the US, in other parts of uh, developed and developing economies. You know, we are a mechanism to support the, the rest of the economy. But I think there's, there's an important point here that we need to look ahead to what happens beyond the crisis. I mean, we are, we are in phase one and arguably not even halfway through phase one of this crisis. This could go on for some time. The big question is going to be and the big challenge is going to be, you know, how do we um, put the economy back on its feet 
afterwards. The economy is effectively in a form of suspended animation now. And what the what the financial services sector is, is providing uh, is the life support system for that. But it's also got to be part of the rehabilitation efforts mm. when we come out of the crisis to make sure that we can continue uh, to, to grow uh, uh, companies, to provide finance, uh, and to be part of the, the effort to get growth back into, um, uh, back into the forefront.